So, as Tom says, my name's Carolyn, and I'm in fifth year in mechanical engineering, so I'm on the master's programme. And I've only got about a month left until I graduate, so I'll pretty much tell you the whole experience at this point. Um, so first off, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about me and why I ended up in engineering, and then why I ended up in Edinburgh as well. So, I'm from the UK, but I finished school in Sydney, I travelled around a bit, and I, but I have my family all based in Scotland, so for me, Scotland was a place that I really wanted to come to. I've got grandparents up here, so it was pretty important for me. Um, I started thinking about engineering. People started to say to me in high school, oh, you're quite good at physics, you're quite good at maths, maybe you should try engineering. I think you've probably all have heard that at this point in time. Um, but I immediately didn't think that engineering was for me. Roads, cars, bridges, not really what I was looking for. Um, but then I started thinking about it a bit more, and I realised that I was really interested in the Paralympics, in um, working with people with disabilities, and the type of engineering that goes into that side of things, into wheelchairs and prosthetics, all that. That started to really interest me. And I was lucky enough to go on a trip to Cambodia with my school in Sydney, and I realised that actually not a lot of people have access to all these type of technologies. A lot of people over there um, been, have lost limbs and they don't have access to the technology that they need. So I started to think about, actually, maybe I would like to get into that sort of technology and make it available to people across the world. Um, so I narrowed it down to biomedical. I was actually saying to someone earlier, I actually picked mechanical as my degree because I didn't know at 17 or 18 whether I wanted to narrow down my options that much at that point. Mechanical is great because you can do such a wide range of things that Tom said, you know, aeronautical, biomedical, mechanical, whatever you're interested in, it's pretty much available to you. And also doesn't even restrict you to engineering at the end of the day. Um, tell us a little bit about why I picked engineering. Um, for Edinburgh itself, the department really struck me. It's got world-class facilities, as you've seen in the videos, and it's also got strong specialised departments. So there's the Institute of Fire, there's um, the Institute for Biomedical Engineering, um, Carbon Capture is a big thing at the university. There's so many different things that you can get involved with, with really strong academic teams to support you through. Um, but more importantly for me, where I was going to live for the next five years. So Edinburgh, as you've seen this morning, is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's got all the theatres, all the galleries, um, all the open space that you could possibly want for five years. It's the kind of perfect combination of a big little city. It's got everything you need, but it doesn't take very long to get anywhere. Um, and obviously the heritage and the tradition up here is fantastic. Um, if you haven't lived until you've been to a Cayley, so put that on your list for freshers week. Um, so I'll take you through kind of my timeline in engineering. Tom's given you an idea of what should happen. I'll tell you what actually happened for me, and we'll see how well they line up. So as we talked about, first year is kind of getting your feet at Edinburgh. So it starts off with your general introductory courses. So I actually did mechanical and civil. I went through the dreaded dilemma of which one to pick. Stuck with mechanical in the end. Um, and you also get to do outside courses. So I ended up doing French and geography, I think. Um, I was living in Pollock Halls in Baird House, which I think is the one you guys all went into this morning. Um, and that's a fantastic experience. Easy, easy way to meet people and just a lot of fun. There's a lot of people from your course who end up in the same halls as you, so you have people to you know, walk to class with and all that jazz. Um, also, first year, it's the best time to try out all your clubs and societies. It's probably when you're going to have the most time in your degree. It's um, maybe not the most demanding of years, but it's the best time to get involved with everything. So. I was part of the Rowing Club in first year um, and joined Engineers Without Borders, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Um, as you can see from the top picture, we have a lot of lab time, so you get to take apart engines, which is chaos, but so interesting. Kind of everyone leaves a bit oil smeared and it's, it's a lot of fun. The lab technicians here are great. They're so interested in what they're doing. And if you, if you have extra questions, you want to get involved in things, they're often great people to go and ask. They're really hands-on. Um, so, as I said, I was part of Engineers Without Borders in my first year, and I applied, um, they do trips every year to go abroad. So I applied for them to go on this project called Project DM. So DM stands for Developing Intermediate Educational Materials. So basically we're trying to bridge the gap between engineering and people that are using the technology that aren't in the UK, aren't in the Western world. So particularly, um, we went across to Ghana, and the idea was that we're trying to bridge the gap between the NGOs who go in and maybe put in a water well or put in a solar powered school and then something breaks and the locals don't know how to fix it. We were trying to spread some education, basic science knowledge, so that they could actually take on the engineering as their own. Um, it was often described in the schools by a lot of the kids came over and told me that science was white magic, that they couldn't do it. 
So it was quite interesting to bridge that gap and to, to do that. It was an absolutely fantastic experience. It's a great charity. So NGS Borders works across the UK and Canada, all, all across the world. So they're a really great organisation to get involved in. Um, we do like lots of projects throughout the semester. So we have, at the moment, we're building a bike-powered cinema. Um, there's a lot of um, aquaponics going on. We've built a wind turbine, a bamboo house. Like, it's quite a good way to get involved and do something practical um, alongside your studies. We're going to present a second year, so this is where your courses start to become a bit more specialised. You start to break it down into um, dynamics, fluid mechanics, thermodynamics, that type of thing. So you start to get a taste of how mechanical is split up into its different specialised subjects. Um, you get lots and lots of lab time this year, so with each of these courses you normally have lab, like compulsory labs that you have to do alongside those degrees. They're often run by PhD or master's students, so it's quite a good opportunity to see where the degree typically is well, getting to them. And there's also lots of design courses, it's when you start to kind of handle MATLAB and CAD and all that type of stuff, so it's all finding your feet for things that are really applicable for later on in your placements and things like that. Um, and also this is where you do your first management course. Now, full disclosure, everyone hates it. In second year, it's not, it's, it's not the most popular of courses, but you realise by the time you get to your placement and applying for jobs, it was actually really helpful. So it's kind of, in hindsight, it's much more enjoyable than you maybe thought it was at the time. Um, and obviously now second year you're a lot more involved in your societies, you maybe start to get onto the committee of some things, you start to get a bit involved. Um, and it's also a good time to do a lot of sport. So the top picture is engineers netball team. Yes, we do have enough girls for a netball team. Um, and the bottom picture is uh, Katie who couldn't be here today, she was on the cricket team in second year. So there's two ways to do it, intramural sport which is a bit more like a casual, a bit more of a Sunday league, and then playing for the university which is a lot more competitive. Um, and I also have a part-time job throughout uni, so it's quite a good time to be able to do it in second year. Um, so third year, I went on exchange in third year, so I applied to go over to Montreal, I went to McGill University, um, and this was fantastic for me. Apart from anything, I'm a bit of a travel addict, so I got to fulfil that side of my personality, but also at this point I was able to start specialising my courses. I picked McGill specifically because I had really strong links with the local hospital, so I was able to take a lot of biomedical courses and get involved with some of their biomedical research that I maybe wouldn't have been able to do until a bit later in Edinburgh. Um, I also brushed up on my French. Um, and in general, it's just an absolutely fantastic experience. Like I definitely recommend it to anyone. Um, but on the other hand, if you're staying here in third year, it's just as fun. Um, you get a lot more choice between your modules. So there's a, there's a big design project. You start to select your courses a little more. Um, and also, I guess, if you're in societies, it's, you're really building, you're establishing yourself in the society, so you, you might be a captain by that point or one of the presidents of society, so it's pretty interesting to stay back here as well. Fourth year um, is when everyone, everyone comes back from their exchange. The first semester of fourth year, you're studying at the university. If, if you're doing the master's, this is, sorry, your first semester at uni, second semester on your placement. So in the first semester, it's pretty much characterised by your fourth year design project, which is interdisciplinary. So you work with civil or electrical engineers. The, the chemical engineers do something slightly different, but you get assigned into groups and you can do lots of different projects. So the one I did was, um, was to do with uh, microelectromechanical systems. So accelerometers in things like your phone, so that when it flips, your phone flips you, or in airbags to set off the airbags. We were designing a, a MEMS accelerometer. So that's what we're doing down here. So we started to have to do a lot more modelling, a lot more um, coding and that type of thing to really understand what the problem was. Um, the other things that were involved were carbon capture and storage plants. They did a passive house, so kind of a house that was completely um, eco-friendly. Um, and what's really great about these projects is they're supported by people in industry. So we had a guy coming in from, I actually can't remember the name of the company, but a men's company who worked selling accelerometers. So he was our mentor for that project had people coming in for the Passive House project from a company called Max Forden, and it was quite a good opportunity to get contacts for your placement, if that's what you're interested in. Um, this was a huge, this is when I really, really improved my computer-based skills, I mean, I was a bit of a rookie before then, and I really, it was a sink or swim situation, you had to just learn, and because you're working in such a big group, everyone, you learn from the people that you're working with as well, which was really great. Um, and again, a lot more involvement in societies. I came back from my exchange and 
kind of wasn't done with it yet. So I joined the Exchange Society here, so taking exchange students around Scotland. That's pictured us all up on the Isle of Skye. So there are so many opportunities to do trips, and we still have time in Fourth Year, which is quite nice. And then, of course, it was the placement. So I did my industrial placement at a company called Touch Bionics in Livingston. So they make prosthetic hands, which is my interest. Um, I absolutely loved my placement. It was absolutely fantastic. I worked in the research and development department at Touch Bionics. And so I was there as a graduate mechanical engineer. So my daily tasks were completely varied. I was designing new products one day. I was testing products for release another day, working on clinical trials. Like I got to see the whole span of working with the manufacturing unit. Um, and really, it's the type of experience that you get from it, what you ask from it. So if you say to people that you work with, actually, I'd really like to go out and meet suppliers, or I'd really like to go and work with a manufacturing team, they're often really, they want you to be interested in what you're doing, they want you to be as useful as possible, so they'll let you do, they'll let you give it a go. And it's, it's an amazing learning experience, and then you start to realise all the things you've studied for the last three and a half years are very relevant indeed. And so it's really, it's a great way to apply the skills that you've acquired over the last few years. Um, as Tom was saying, there's, this is just one experience, so I mean, it's unbelievable the contrast in what the people in my year, so there's maybe 40 of us in my year, there's um, someone down at Lotus for Formula One, um, a girl over in Gore, so doing Gore-Tec for their waterproof jackets and things like that, so just designing those fabrics. There's me here, someone doing research on um, tissue engineering in Sweden, like you can really do anything you want. and. The uni has a lot of contacts, but if you decide that you want to do something, you contact them and you make it happen. So that's the university never worked with touch bonnets before, so I just decided that that's where I wanted to work and I made sure that I could get in touch with someone. It involves quite a lot of perseverance, but it's definitely worth it to get a placement that you enjoy at the end of the day. That brings me on to fifth year. So this is the year I'm in just now, and there is so much flexibility in your courses. In fact, there are so many people in my year that I haven't seen since fourth year because we do such diverse courses at this stage. I actually don't have classes at the moment anymore. So I specialised my courses to do biomedical, which might be best for um, But then you can specialise in your management classes or in your renewable energy or anything in between, really. Um, and it's also the year of the dreaded master's thesis. I'm now two weeks, handed in two weeks ago, so I can talk about it with a smile. It was a bit stressful for a while there. Um, but that's a great experience as well. You get a supervisor and you work alongside them to conduct a research or experimental based project. Um, you also often get to work with their PhD students because they tend to work on the same topic. So it's great to see how that side of academia works. If you learn about how industry works on your placement, this is, gives you a taste of what it would be like to do a PhD and, and work in academia. So I did my project on the design of a bioreactor, so basically a little device that you can grow liver cells in. So it's to do with tissue engineering, which when I first started, I was like, this sounds way too biological for me. But actually it was on fluid control in the device to make sure that the environment was, the mechanical environment was perfect for growing cells. It's quite an interesting way to look at a, different, a problem from a different perspective. Um, so many different topics, again, you do what you're interested in, the um, lecturers put out a list of subjects that they say, hey, I'm quite fancy researching this, does anyone want to do it? You can apply for these or you can suggest your own topic again. So um, Katie, who sometimes does the thought, did hers on impact testing of cricket helmets. So she was looking to see how um, the age of a cricket helmet affected how much protection it was actually giving you. So she's done a lot of stuff and she's working to try and put some of that into the new standards for cricket helmets because she doesn't think they're good enough right now. From her research, it seems to be some proof in that. Um, there's a lot of stuff to do with the Hyperloop, so I don't know if you've heard of Elon Musk and the new high-speed travel, so one of my friends is doing a project on that. It's a project on modelling wave turbines, someone did their project at Lotus, like you can do anything you want for them. Um, so yeah, really interesting, definitely you can say it with a smile now that it's done. Um, yeah. um, and then so basically all I have left to do with my exams. Um, and then it's graduation. So um, I guess this gives you a little bit of a taste of where you end up after your degree. So I'm actually one of the people who have a job lined up in September. So I'll be working at Johnson & Johnson in Leeds. So designing, um, so as an orthopedic engineer, designing hip and knee implants, which I'm really excited about. Um, and then Katie, who normally is here, she is, as you might have guessed from her thesis, a bit of a cricket nut. So she was away at the Cricket World Cup qualifiers 
technologies, um, doing, she's got an offer for a PhD at Edinburgh to do impact dynamics in sports. Um, so again, she's trying to see if she can help to improve regulations in the sports world. Um, so yeah, that kind of gives you a brief overview of my five years and what you might expect from yours. Um, so if anyone has any questions, then please let me know. Thank you. This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.